first session. Um, I just want to go over a few things. First, we have that chat box. Make sure to um, connect with one another and let us know where you're tuning in from. Then we have that Q&A box. Um, you can drop any questions that you have for our speakers there, and they will be sure to reach out. So now I will hand it on over to Tripp and Jared. Awesome. Thank you very much, Bridget. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's tech showcase and for joining the Canvas session. You know, Green Book has been on the forefront of recognizing the value and the power of text analytics in insights. And in fact, text analytics was a number one emerging research method in the most recent GRIT report. So it's really apropos that that has become a, a focus of today's uh, tech showcase. And well, Canvas has been there all along. We've been a leader in text analytics for insights, and we're excited to share a little bit about what makes uh, what makes us special. So I'm Trip Cusera. I'm the uh, head of marketing for Canvas, and uh, really excited today to be joined by Jared Feldman, who is the founder and CEO. Jared is really a visionary when it comes to the power of open-ended text as a way to understand consumers. Not only did he start Canvas with a mission of making the world more empathetic, he holds patents in the area of ocean measurement. Uh, Jared, thanks for being here today um, to showcase Canvas. Absolutely, Jim. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So, of course, we don't do analytics, uh, text analytics just for fun. Uh, we're doing it because we want to understand our consumers. So, before we I hand over the reins to Jared. Um, I want to start with a little shock and awe to ground us in what's at stake. Um, and so here's a hot take for you. Customer experience is in decline. Forrester's most recent CX index showed that a nearly 20% of brands saw a drop in CX quality. And in fact, CX quality is back to early 2020 levels, kind of giving up their gains in 2021. So. Now, obviously the question is, what is happening here? A recent Accenture study validates what many of us you know, really are intuitively feeling, which is that consumer preferences and behaviors are changing at an ever increasing rate. In fact, 64% of, of uh, consumers that were surveyed, and there's over, over 15,000 uh, uh, consumers surveyed as part of this study, indicated that they, that they expect businesses to change more quickly to meet their evolving needs. But 88% of executives uh, say that they're not able to keep pace with this uh, increased quickening pace of change. Uh, so clearly organizations need to accelerate the customer feedback loop. You know, but how is the question. Organizations today are surrounded by a vast sea of consumer feedback text from feedback surveys, social media, support channels, reviews, et cetera, et cetera. But like the case of the ancient mariner, it's really a matter of water, water everywhere, but not able to quench our thirst for uh, understanding. Uh, so really it's this lack of being able to uh, uh, synthesize and understand what all of this, uh, all of this data means, whether that's in a single study or whether that's in a, a full kind of uh, consumer feedback loop. So as you start analyzing your next survey, you may be wondering what insights are hidden, locked away in the unstructured text of, of open ends. And that really is kind of the animating mission for Canvas. Jared founded Canvas with a mission of giving researchers and CX teams the power to, cons to understand consumer feelings at scale and without the high cost and complexity of previous generations of text an analysis tools. So Jared, I'm gonna hand it over to you to set up the demo. Um, maybe you could start by orienting us to the key capabilities of Canvas and, uh, and really what sets a Canvas apart. Yeah, absolutely, Trip. thank you. Uh, we're, we're, we're really focused on, on putting the power of understanding in, in, in uh, the, the hands of every, of every researcher and CX professional. The, at a high level, we want to be able to import data from any source. The majority of folks listening don't just have surveys now. They've got transcripts and reviews and other things at their disposal. Uh, it's really important that the problem to be solved is how do we help answer the questions that you have in as few actions as possible? And so it can't be manual, but there needs to be this ability to have AI help you get to the, the, the insight more efficiently. Um, we have a core 
work stream and, and, and a lot of uh, thinking uh, around how do we make Canvas, not our Canvas, but, but your Canvas. And so every customer has this uh, really simple and powerful ability to, to customize everything that you see in Canvas such that it reflects your domain expertise and, and, and nomenclature and how you think about the world. Uh, and then finally, you know, nobody wants another dashboard to log into. This is really about insights and the story we tell between the, the data we find and ultimately the action the organization takes. And so having really clear, concise, compelling reporting stories and, and data visualizations at the ready uh, becomes really critical. Um, so with that, we've got a ton of new features that we just released, and uh, I'm really proud and excited to uh, orient you guys on 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 uh, our our demo and maybe even give you a quick preview of, of what's to come. Uh, Bridget, can we switch to the demo? Awesome. So what you should see in front of you is this uh, beautiful Excel sheet. Every researcher has seen one of these, but this is what every survey result ever looks like. Um, in this case, we're doing a demo on uh, a retail brand who's asking the question, how would you describe the brand? Uh, and this is a tracker. They're doing it wave over wave and trying to understand maybe key changes, what's different. For example, are people more often talking about the style now and who's that, who is that coming from? Um, or maybe we launched a campaign and we want to understand maybe how that's having an impact. Uh, but it's not just about the open ends. Critical, too, are all of the closed-ended data or metadata that you might have. We need no PII, but you're able to give us things like, you know, likelihood to shop in person or the region or the age. Um, often customers give us a unique identifier and can tie that back to uh, an internal database. We're starting with the spreadsheet because you can just see in, uh, you know, how colorful the open ends are, how much texture there, there are. And right now, most researchers, most of the time, use this as qualitative color, right? You'll do a quick scan of Excel. You'll find an example or two you'll like and then um, tell the story you maybe would have told anyway using the closed-ended data. And what we're trying to enable you to do is leverage open ends as core insights, that there are clear value drivers here that if surfaced in a way where there was low overhead, easy to access um, understanding. Uh, you would leverage it and leverage it with confidence. Uh, so generally, I'm going to show you two things, how you get data into Canvas and then what it does. I'll just note that we've got native integrations now with folks like Qualtrics and Decipher. So uh, you can leverage one of those. You can leverage our API, but also just as easy as really any spreadsheet. Uh, you can just go ahead and drag into the system. Now, this uh, data set represents a uh, new wave. Actually, it's, this is the complete data set. This is almost like if we were doing a, you know, we just started working together and you want to load in your last couple of years of tracking, for example. But we're going to pretend for the moment that we haven't added Q3 quite yet. We want to add that to our, to our tracker. So we're literally just going to follow this wizard, teach Canvas how to think about the spreadsheet, where the header is where I can find the open ends. If there were more than one, you can just point and click. Very simple, you can rename, write an app. The idea is once you get the sheet in, you don't need to go back to the spreadsheet. Uh, God, we wanna get you out of Excel as much as we possibly can. And then as we talked about, it's not just about the open end, but also the close end. If you wanna be able to cut by age or region, et cetera, and we're gonna, we're gonna go one step further, we're actually gonna run stat testing for you. So once we structure how people are feeling, we're gonna then tell you how the Northeast felt differently than the Southeast, uh, just, by, just by that one click. And then on this last detail slide, uh, one of the cool innovations we, we launched in Q4 is that we support every language that Google Translate supports. So imagine if this was a multilingual study. You just flip this switch. And now Canvas will detect the language, translate it to English, keep the original, and give you uh, complete clarity uh, in English what's going on across your data set. This can be a standalone ad hoc file for sure, but a, an enormously gro uh, fast growing use case for us is this tracking idea where I can flip this switch over here and just add this to a previous study. So this is going to be our fashion uh, tracker. And when I do that, you'll note it's automatically filling in a bunch of things it needs to know. We know that this is apparel and fashion. We know this is a brand study. This is going to be wave four because we've already had the wave three, but we can rename this to whatever we'd like. And then rules are enabled. This is a core use case. The, the customization aspect, Canvas gives you the ability to tell us these are the core things I always care about. You're not limited to those things. Canvas, in fact, will go above and beyond and tell you beyond what you told us it was important. Um, here's what you need to know. And then you can adjust what you're always looking for. 
but the rules functionality leverages machine learning. And you tell us that I care about the fashion, the unique fashion style and Canvas is going to find for you all the things related to that in a consistent way that you can then benchmark and track. That is it. Basically, we go from messy spreadsheet to inside of Canvas in less than 30 seconds. Almost every user that uh, gets shown this is able to pick it up um, uh, without needing additional support. With that said, we're hugely dedicated to support. We've got an amazing support and service team. We've also got a real-time chat application built right into the application. So you can uh, message us and we'll respond within five minutes. We certainly have help articles and such. And then this is actually my favorite. We have a, uh, a help uh, collection, a set of um, uh, collections where you can say, I want to become, you know, uh, uh, I want to go through training. I learn best by, by video. Um, I want to understand the uploading a project and be walked through it. And so without having to talk to a, a human, if, if you don't want, you can literally, you know, DIY, learn how the core concepts in Canvas work. It's really, really powerful. All right, that is the upload process. We're gonna go ahead and flip to what the results look like because they're over here. We're answering the question, how did you describe the brand? And Canvas is uh, uh, surfacing all of the wave information that you've given us right here. So I can look at them all at once, uh, uh, one at a time. And so for example, if I flip into Q1, we're looking at just the 673 open ends that fell into Q1. And uh, you're greeted first with what we call highlights. So whereas most uh, uh, tooling is more about the information retrieval, we're trying to be the easiest way to transform the open ends into actual insights. And so many of you care deeply about finding things that are statistically significant. So Canvas is doing that work for you out of the gate. What you're seeing here is in Q1, people talking about quality, well, it received 2.8 times more enjoyment compared to the average of the other topics, and it has a Z-score of six. Uh, we also, remember, gave it the age information, and the 30 to 34 group was actually most likely, six times more likely, to talk about the brand being young than the average of the other groups, and so on and so forth. This is pr uh, presented to you in order of its significance. All of this is interactive. I can click into this and see all the examples, et cetera. It's really, really powerful. Now, uh, what I'm most interested in, though, is starting to see how this stuff trends, right? This is a tracker. What's different? And so uh, I'm going to click on all waves. And literally, this feature was just released yesterday. Uh, now, I can see, of course, in aggregate, all of my information. And I'm stopping here for a moment. I want to I point out Canvas's approach to emotion measurement. Canvas holds multiple patents and has been uh, 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 working on perfecting how we can accurately quantify how people feel, even though no one speaks properly, uh, period. But certainly when they're answering your survey questions or on the internet, uh, positive and negative is a bad way to think about language. It's a great way to think about your business. If it's driving positive outcome, then that's great. So for example, you need to understand the, the shades of emotion. We need to understand, are people expressing love or just enjoyment, or is it just interesting? If you know, this particular brand has a, has a line with really funny prints, really funny sort of prints on the, on the apparel. And so funny is actually a great thing in this example, uh, assuming it's about the prints, right? But if it, you're a super serious brand and people are laughing, that's maybe not so good. And so Canvas uniquely has 42 core emotions uh, you also have the ability to really quickly flip to Ekman or Plutchik, which for my psychology friends in here, those are the two most uh, cited academic frameworks for emotion measurement. Uh, and it's just a really powerful way to understand, hey, I, I, I spent so much energy trying to create beautiful clothing. Like, is that what's, is that, is that what's happening here? Now, I want to start to understand how this stuff changes over time. And there's this little toggle here. It just draws it over the course of my, uh, my waves. So these are custom blocks that you've created in terms of waves. I want to maybe edit their naming convention or reorder them. It's all, you know, everything is completely customizable in Canvas. Uh, that's one of, the, uh, one of the most powerful things about it. And I can see how any of these emotions are trending. Now, uh, Canvas does a number of types of uh, analysis. We've got emotion-based analysis, which for some of your questions, like why did you uh, perform that way or how was your experience at the, at the store is really, really important. 
We also are doing topical analysis. This is not dictionary based. We are literally on the fly finding the main ways in which people are talking about the same thing. And so clothing is coming up in 10% of open ends. Uh, but it includes, if you see the tooltip here, uh, things like clothes or fabrics or fabric or pieces of clothing. This matters because almost every researcher I know has to spend a ton of time figuring out misspellings and plurals and inflections and synonyms and yeah. So now that's all taken care of. Um, and then this works the way you'd expect, where I can click on clothing. And below the fold, it's going to show me uh, how people felt about the clothing. Maybe the cross tabs, right? Any, any data we gave it, for example, or age or region or likelihood to shop. And then we can see all the verbatims on the right. Now, I want to move us over to the summary because the summary is where we're applying our domain logic, our understanding that this is our retail uh, study. It's, it's um, a brand study. And you've taught us about what's important for you to track over time. We have a one-step hierarchy here with nets and codes. So a net is like style. And the codes inside style is like youthful, trendy, unique, etc. And I can click on youthful and see anyone talking about youthfulness and of course we've got really simple reporting tools like favorite your, your your best verbatims export this to powerpoint share this with a colleague you know the the exporting capabilities are really powerful uh, and then within youthful i can see the other things that are being talked alongside of it or the the, the who's driving it again now uh one of my favorite features here is i can take my nets which is of course showing me now that as opposed to in aggregate over the course of the waves, I've just added Q3, for example, and style is clearly running away with it, right? All of a sudden, style is now the number one thing being mentioned and talked about generally, regardless of how it was expressed. Uh, you can see from the tooltip here, it's up two percentage points since the previous quarter. Now I want to understand where it's coming from. Like, is this from a certain age group or, or cohort? And there's a number of ways to do that, but this is a really powerful feature here where if I just care about style, I'm going to just go ahead and pick style as the thing I want to trend. And I want to break it down, let's say, by age. So let's go ahead and map all of our ages. Style by age, hit apply. And so we just learned in under two clicks that one, with Q3 being added, style has jumped to the front of the line and has grown quarter over quarter. We can see here uh, in aggregate, but also there's a clear trend that the 20 to 24 year old group continues to grow in terms of uh, how it's talking about style. And so you can imagine as the, the stakeholder responsible to reporting back to marketing, uh, whether or not their style focus campaign launched in Q Q2 is actually resonating with the, uh, the core target demographic of 20 to 24 year olds. Well, that's basically surface for you automatically and then easy to understand reporting that gets you there. All right. So uh, we're showing how you can really quickly and easily understand exactly how people feel, what they're talking about, the main themes uh, of conversation and how they relate to each other. One of the most powerful things in Canvas is how you can, when you approach the system, uh, uh, either approach it from a sense of, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for, but could you surface some things that are maybe interesting for me to pull the thread? Or, and this happens often, I'm being asked about a particular cohort. I need to write a report just on how that group feels, right? Or if you're doing ad testing, I just care about a certain creative. And so I want to introduce you to, to the smart search, which has all of the structured information that we've added to your data, like the summary information, the nets and the codes, the topics and the emotions. And what's cool about this, lots of dashboards have filters, but this is completely uh, Boolean capable, complex Boolean queries. We can do ands and ors, nots, parentheses, uh, near operators, et cetera. And so in this example where I want to, you know, uh, get my 20 to 20 to 34 year olds in totality, I can just create a query for that. And within within seconds, I'm now looking at just that cohort. This visual is now updated to just be about this information. I can see uh, uh, the breakdown of, of my choices. All of the verbatims are here with easy ways to favorite and share. 
Um, it's really, really straightforward. Now, uh, one thing I want to touch on too is the customization aspect of this because uh, these were applied in advance. Uh, we, 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 we knew what we were looking for generally, but maybe we want to make some tweaks. And so what you're seeing here down below is we call this our edit bar. It's following us around and it's giving us the ability to, for example, manage summary, which I can also do via M on my keyboard. And I've got a drag and drop experience here where I can start to teach Canvas, you know, um, uh, these attributes here, I'd love if they were instead called, you know, uh, brand attributes. And um, the fit information, I actually don't really need it as a separate category. It, it's helpful for it to just be in style. Um, and just by organizing it slightly, renaming it, you can merge things. All of a sudden, 99% of the work was already done. I'm spending a few moments just making sure that it's reflect, reflecting uh, exactly what I want. And then I hit apply and it's immediately reflected in my dashboard. Further still, uh, there's this, this opportunity for, for the, the, the folks on the call to think, really think about, you know, you might have a code frame and trying to be kind of filling in specific codes, or you might just be of the mind where I know generally what I've looked at enough spreadsheets. I know what I'm looking for. Um, Canvas gives you just this really quick ability to, if you have no idea what you're looking for in advance, like, hey, when people talk about the fit or it being small or the size, um, we want to create a, uh, a, we call it a code, and we'll focus on, you know, sizing as a code. Um, and Maybe we'll call it general conversation. And so this is me creating a, a hierarchy just by using plain text. And I can apply it to just this study, or I can go ahead and save it as a rule. And when you do that, uh, you've got this really magical ability to build, you know, a set of rules that are, that are going to customize Canvas exactly to your liking. So in this case, we've got a fashion brand perception set of rules that we've built uh, with their with their perfect emojis, uh, and it'll just apply anytime anytime myself or anyone at the organization wants to use it. All right. Um, lastly, uh, I just want to make sure that it's obvious that all of this, the point of this, is not to uh, keep you here. The goal is to get you in and out as efficiently as possible. And so Canvas uh, sets the bar in the the amount of exports and the amount of complexity and thoughtfulness that we put into our uh, exporting capability. Uh, native integrations with Tableau and Power BI, we've got um, uh, everything you see here is exportable, both via Excel spreadsheet and PowerPoint. And the PowerPoints, which get used all the time, looks like this, where um, in this example, I am, uh, whatever was on my screen when I hit export, it's going to produce it for me here. And these are not these are not uh, static graphs. These are, as you would hope, um, things that you can, you can adjust and change. If you don't like our coloring, you can uh, change it. If you don't want a tree map, it can be a bar. The data is embedded here, so you can delete and, and change. And uh, these are our, our uh, trend graphs. And so we went from messy spreadsheet of a tracker to understanding exactly how people are feeling in aggregate and why, and then over time, what shifted in literally just a few moments. We're really proud and excited of how much progress uh, our customers are able to make, uh, to make. We hear it all the time that, you know, they, 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 they spend hours uh, in sheets like this, and oftentimes we'll even avoid asking open ends because it's often so painful in the administrative and cognitive overhead. But the reality is, is that there are, uh, incredible advancements that really can accelerate time to value. Uh, and the goal is not to give you another tool that you need to log into, but instead, how do we help you answer your questions in as few actions as possible? The last thing I want to show you, and this is a bit of a preview we're really excited about. Obviously, the, uh, uh, there's a lot of, of momentum and tailwinds around generative AI and how do you help and assist with storytelling. There isn't a single um, researcher who looks at this type of data and isn't thinking to themselves, what's the story here? How do I answer this question? Um, and so one of the things we're gonna be doing uh, as of today is opening up our wait list for our, our customers 
for something we call AI Story Assist. AI Story Assist is uh, launching here next month. And what it enables is all of the structured information, all of the analysis we've done, we're literally just going to explain it in story cards right in line with the application. And you're going to be able to just as easily get an overview without doing anything or ask a follow-up. Like in this question, we're literally, we're saying, what do people find confusing? That's what my business stakeholder asked me. And Canvas will just write you the answer. One click ways to export, get it out into the world. Um, and, and it's completely uh, 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 synergistic with all of that, that customization capability we just talked about. You can very easily cut to, hey, just this cohort, what was going on with them, et cetera. Uh, so we're going to show you uh, how to get to this in a moment, um, but we're really excited about this. And it's, it's a continued uh, investment in doubling down on being the easiest uh, and, and most accurate way to transform open-ended text into uh, critical insights for you. And that is the end of the demo trip. Awesome, Jared. Thank you so much. <clears throat> really appreciate you bringing that to life. And of course, uh, teasing the uh, incredible uh, story assist that uh, that we're working on. So folks, you can, I, I've posted the uh, link to join the wait list uh, for this capability in the chat. Uh, you can also just go directly to this URL or you can scan the QR code here and that will bring you to, um, to sign up for the wait list. So we're really excited about this and um, uh, can't wait to, uh, to, to uh, share more about it. Uh, so I think that's all the time we have for uh, today. I uh, want to uh, thank, uh, let me just forward the slide here, certainly thank uh, Green Book for hosting today's tech showcase. Uh, and, um, yeah, we, we, we obviously, oh, I'm sorry about that. We obviously uh, are super passionate about the role uh, that open ends play the value that they bring to research, the nuance, the detail, et cetera. And so we certainly would love to uh, share a, a customized demo of Canvas or just chat about your needs, whether it's uh, you bring a, a sample data set or we have some of our own that we can certainly go through that match your use case. Uh, so, so, so let us know. Uh, we're happy to follow up and, and get that set up. Uh, you can certainly lo also learn more at uh, canvas.ai uh, and, and explore on your own. So thanks very much, Bridget. Thank you uh, to you and the team and, and to Green Book. And Jared, thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.